What's up guys, this is Sean and welcome to another episode of the Eheng Podcast and today we will answer a question from email, this is from Lex. Dear Eheng, my name is Lex, I have a question for you and hope that you will be able to give me some insights on how to maximize my rental income. So, I've bought my first property in the Birch by SCP Jalan Ipo, which is a two-room, two-bathroom 668 square feet unit project will be finishing completion around 2022 while i was thinking ways of maximizing my rental profit by renting out on a room basis so it could eventually cover my installment hopefully to get some extra also not bad my question to you is it advisable that if I could cut partition wall at the living room into an extra room with balcony so I could fully maximize into a three room, two bathroom? Since nowadays, living room might consider a waste of space. Tenants usually come back from work and then they just go back to their rooms. Besides, we won't be using TV so often now since we can watch through gadgets on the bed. By converting the living room to an extra room, balcony is facing KL City view and I believe it might gain additional value. As an investor, we are concerned about the ROI and by adding a partition wall would not cost a lot. For your ease of reference, I have attached the layout for my unit. Regarding of location, it's 6 kilometers to KLCC, 300 meters to MRT2, 5 stations to KLCC and etc. Probably going to be another interchange when MRT3 comes. It might be a factor that drives population. Also, when the project is completed, I would be interested to engage the makeover guys for the makeover process to add value to its rental. Appreciate if you give me some insights on how the makeover is going to be done and the pricing so financially I can be prepared. Thank you for reading my email and I look forward to your answer in YouTube. So thank you very much Lex for sending in the email right so basically he has a unit in a new project that he had bought now it's a two bedroom two bathroom unit and just like every other investor he wants to maximize profit so what can he do so he's now asking whether should he convert his living room into another room so let's discuss about this in general first right like basically what investors do to increase their rental income right number one is you do a makeover lah, right to dress up your unit so people will pay higher price to live in your unit so that's number one very direct so this is only applicable in areas where there's a lot of expats or the disposable income is slightly higher for example you need to understand that that location there are people or tenants who can pay 3000 for a studio unit then only it makes sense for you to actually dress it up because there's such a market don't just dress it up right because the same strategy wouldn't work in a blue collar area or a student area then the second way is to actually break it up and do subletting like now you have two bedrooms you are thinking of adding another room my question is why not add two more rooms right why you need a kitchen for you need a pantry you need you don't need a kitchen then what people do is instead of renting out to one tenant, one tenant can afford 1,005, for example. Is it easier to look for four tenants who can afford four to 600 per month? So let's say 400, 500, 500, 600. Then that is already 2,000 per month. So it's easier to break even that way. However, you will need to manage tenant by tenant. But in this case, it's based on your moral meter. Okay. Because all of us has been student before. Like last time I share a master bedroom with four other dudes. Oh, so a unit that would be like 10 people. Everyone sharing the living room with their desk and PC, right? So that desk is where we eat, where we play, where we watch TV. We just basically go to the room and sleep. A small tilam space, that's about it. Or four to five dudes right, share the same toilet. Does it make money for the owner? Yes. So by breaking down space to suit the affordability is very, very important. Like for student areas, it's very easy to just partition room by room, right? I think room is a higher grade than bed. Some people even rent out beds, meaning there will be two bedder in this room. So if you were to rent from me, you're actually renting this space. There'll be your own wardrobe, your own table, and your own bed. Then some is like a stack into a double decker. So basically, you are just breaking things into smaller pieces so people can afford. But again, we had discussed this before in the channel morally is it appropriate a lot of this sub lease model i don't know even talk about it because sometimes it's very sensitive there are a lot of haters they will shoot email to me right why you spoil my girl and things like that like if you were to throw in 10 person into a room it's way higher than the proposed number of people in the house then what about fire safety 
can you really insure everything in the house because you partition so many things out, right? And once you do that, the whole building will be doing that as well. So let's say that's 400 units, right? That's supposed to be 1,600 people. Very rough numbers. But now suddenly per unit, there's like 8 to 10 people. So you imagine the whole building will be very worn down. The facilities will be worn down. And there goes your capital appreciation. The value of the property will be strictly dictated by the rental returns. So this is a discussion on whether are you a capitalist or are you a humanitarian cap lah. Like personally for myself I used to do sublet for my very first apartment because at that time I cannot break even so what I do is to rent out room by room that is actually easier but there's a lot more work on my side but there's a group of people that, that do sublet as a business so they collaborate with property owners like you don't want to manage never mind I manage for you I'll put in the investment to do a partition but you need to rent to me at a certain rate so I can still make a profit so I will manage the tenancies every now and then some people can go up to several units 10, 20 units right you times 5 that's like 100 different tenants so it's a business not so much a passive cash flow kind of thing lah. and that proves that this is totally possible the third way in increasing rental returns right is to go airbnb model if your location is positioned next to public transportation i think that's the main criteria generally it's very hot in the eye of a tourist or a short-term stay person because if i were to rent your place i need to move around kl easily and a tenant of airbnb right Generally, they want value for money. So the treatments of your room needs to be somewhat a little bit different in comparison to the previous two. You don't need to be super hyped up, but it needs to be themed. Let's say like a Star Wars theme or a Hello Kitty theme, a more funky type of theme, One Piece theme. That will put you up in the search in the website higher. Lah. Again, there are a lot of people who are running this homestay model as a business and they will collaborate with property owners again and they make money out of it. So it's a whole business altogether and it's working. Unfortunately, not in this current situation of lockdown. These people are suffering a lot, especially those in KLCC areas. Lah. So back to your context right, in your unit. So now the school of thought is right where now it's a two bedroom, two bathroom, right? If you can actually convert it into a three bedroom, two bathroom, your unit is immediately upgraded into the next level. Okay, so this level I'm talking about is when rental rates are divided into studio units, one bader, two bader, three bader. So by upgrading your unit, you'll be the cheapest three bader in that particular building. And that puts you in a better position for negotiation again all this right needs to be driven by the tenant profiles who will be staying at the birch around Sentol area right people who works in kl then their salary roughly is around three to five thousand and they will spend around five to six hundred for rental right so after you take away living room right i would suggest to go further where you can do up another room the dining and the living can be converted into two bedrooms then you just prepare a pantry for people to just boil water or to just wash their cutleries and do their laundries but speaking from experience i've gone from room subletting into long-term stays because of the hassle well this depends on individual investors preference like i choose peace of mind over more cash flow i can divide my room further i can rent out to two more people so now i need to deal with four to five different tenants all the time but i get like 300 extra or I choose to just rent out to a family that pays around 200 less. Which one would you prefer? Here, I deal with one person and I pass to my tenant management team, right? So I actually opt for peace of mind so I can focus on the channel, I can focus on my career to make more money instead of every time being frustrated over the different issues caused by the tenants. Like tenant A, don't like tenant B, la. tenant B always bring different girls back to the unit. La. Then one of them tenant C smoking, la. tenant D brings the pet back. La. Then Wi-Fi not working. La. Because of so many people, the toilet starts clogging. La. And again, one thing to highlight as well, um, the option for Airbnb is strictly up for management approval, which means a lot of management bodies of buildings right they are saying no to short-term stays already because it compromised safety it compromised the comfort of actual residents but in my opinion it depends right if that building is strictly built 
for investment purposes one then by all means uh. but if it's really a home like a 2 million ringgit apartment I use all my hard earned sweat and tears right convert them into money so I can buy this property and now my neighbour is like a party place for Airbnb that is super frustrating every time I go and use the facilities there will be weird people then people all take picking video la, taking vlogs la, taking pictures la. then my children there so I pay for all the maintenance but I cannot use the facilities it's very very frustrating then because they just come in and out yes I can complain and things like that but who really does the enforcements right and last of all if you want to know more right, you can just go to the makeover guys website you can actually use hashtag Sean Tan makeover and there's like a current promotion between my boss and I right now to bring more value for you guys you guys can enjoy up to 5,000 worth of extra benefits actual discount is around 8 to 1,000 ringgit but you get like extra warranties and guarantees and protection for your unit if you use that hashtag lah. and since the consultation is free might as well just pick their brains, right? I will drop the link down below and thank you very much for your email. I really appreciate it. For those who still have any question regarding real estate, do just email me at T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G at gmail.com or you can just DM me on Instagram I-H-E-R-N-G and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.